Hi there. Well, I can put it off no longer. It is time. It is time to start working on the 1963 Hoover Dynamatic Model 1100. We all just pause and say a quick prayer for my sanity. Thank you. Yes, this is not the easiest job in the world. Far from it, in fact. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how to take one of these machines apart. It's quite a complicated procedure. Um, these were not made... <laughs> see, I'm tempted to say these were not made particularly well. And whilst that is kind of true, they were made to be a product of their time. Um, and that's the problem with it, because there are so many parts and there are so many screws and there are so many different screws and there are so many ways that, uh, that, that you need to do it. You, there's a certain sequence you need to do it in. Uh, and it is, it's quite, let me turn that light off. It is quite difficult. So here we go. The very first thing you need to do in order to disassemble a dynamatic slash convertible is undo the flex and remember at all times you must be very very careful because these these machines are getting old now <laughs> getting old they are old remove the handle and there's a screw here now this one amazingly has not broken so undo this screw and where's my magnetic holder it's probably gone oh there it is no. <laughs> That's the first screw of many. And then you very gingerly, you're going to need a lot of screwdrivers for this. Remove this plastic piece. See, this one's not even going to come out. No, that's not going to come out. Fine. Hopefully the handle will remove. Yes, it will. So the handle comes out and then <laughs> it's going to be a nightmare to put back in. See, there's a, there's a socket down the end of the handle there, which I'm going to have to pull out later. Uh, and there's a plug on the top of the machine. So let me close this bag door and show you. Just let me get rid of the handle in a second. We'll put that down there for safekeeping. Chuck. You see there, there's a plug. Now, this being the first machine, um, it, and up until I think 1120, model 1124, certainly in the UK, they had this style plug on them. Uh, the later machines had like, um, how can I describe it? It was like a white plastic plug, but it kind of clipped in, uh, so it held itself in, which meant when you pulled the handle off, the, the, the plug and socket assembly would be viewable. So, it wouldn't happen like this one's happened, where the socket has got stuck in the handle, which makes it even harder. Now, the second step, <laughs> this is going to be a long road, is to remove this hose. So this hose brings the air up from the cleaner base into the dust bag. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, later machines have like a, a cuff, if you like, on this hose. And you can just pull it out. Easy peasy. Not so on the original model. No, not so. You need to remove this piece here in order to get the hose out. So I'm going to change it around and then we're going to take this piece off next. Here we are with the airflow control mechanism. So we need to remove all these screws. Once we've got those screws out, we can hopefully, yes, remove the airflow control mechanism. And there's the back side of it. So we're going to make a little pile of parts. Here's the um, the unit that swivels back and forth, as you can see there, uh, directing the airflow from the hose to the cleaner head. Now we can pull this hose out, he says, hopefully. Uh, there we go that out like so and it's now released 
and the next step is to remove the bag door. And to remove the bag door, we need to take out these two screws. As you can see, these two screws have little uh, plates which go against this metal bar here, and they hold the bag door in place. So let's whip out these screws. And now the bag door can be removed from the machine, like so. Once you've got the bag door off, there's now two, four, six screws within the bag compartment that need to be undone, which will release the front of the cleaner. So let's take these off. So with those screws removed, now we can remove the front of the machine. So let's turn it around and we should be able to very carefully, because this grill can become very weak, remove the front of the machine. Now, see, this is, this is tricky. Because down here, there's a little, a big catch. And you kind of have to, oh, God damn it. Oh, wait a minute, is it? Do you know what? Because this is an early machine, I think there might be some more screws down there. It's certainly not the case in the later convertibles. And I've got a wire in the way. And I can't see anything. I could have sworn I saw a screw hole. Oh yeah, actually, do you know what? I think I'm lying to you. Yeah, I think, actually, there's definitely not more screws on, on the later machines, but this one might actually be screwed in. So forget that. <laughs> you do have to take this off in order to fire, follow, follow the wiring down. So pause that thought. Oh, we'll now try and remove uh, the cleaner head. Welcome to my lap. <laughs> so this is the point where it becomes even harder because we have to balance the machine on our lap. Hooray. So first thing we want to do is to remove the base plate. Oh, we might get away with that. Yeah, that's good. I should have tried that first. <laughs> and then we can remove the base plate, which comes away thus, and we add that to our ever growing pile of parts. Now we can remove the brush roll, like so. That belt is very weak. Um, add the brush roll to our pile of parts. Remove the belt and can we ah, remove the air hose like so, put that on a pile of parts and there's a spring right here which we want to disconnect so let's get along those pliers and disconnect this spring and then hopefully we can get that out, there we go, there's our spring. Keep that safe. Now we have a, a selection of four screws. So we need to get rid of this piece of metal, this massive piece of metal. Um, we need to undo this screw first. So this is the uh, sort of tension return for the handle. So this comes out. Keep that screw safe. So many different types of screw. This is part of the problem. I'm just gonna swing this round and show you here show you what we've got so you've got this side is a little plastic um, unit here with a rod that goes through it so that that's that side and then over here we have the ratchet mechanism you can see the ratchet mechanism right here so two screws here and two screws here so let's take them out You can see it takes a long time to do one of these. Okay, there's that one. I'm trying as best as I can to keep the screws together. It just makes it easier to put it back together when the time comes. 
And now we remove the screws from this side. And we should almost be at the point where we can remove the base from the cleaner. So you kind of have to like wiggle it through. And it's not particularly easy because you've got a lot of metal and a lot of things that can get caught. Plus you've got the tension of the front wheels. <laughs> oh God, this is awful. See, you just kind of have to wiggle it like that and then hope for the best. So what happens now is <laughs> the base travels oh, up, up the body like so. And then that releases the machine's cast base, which is surprisingly heavy. There's quite a lot of weight in this component, but that's off. So that's fantastic. Whew. Okay. Now we're almost at the point of seeing the motor. Ooh, exciting. This is where things now become slightly easier. So we can remove this piece of metal here, which holds the body to the cast um, base. I'll put that over there. And now there's four screws to undo and we should be into the motor. Now I'm going to leave those screws where they are just so it's easier to remember where they go. I'll try and pry this open very carefully. You can feel the seals giving way. This should now lift up and out of the way. Oh, please. Please. And we're in. Oh, my God. Right. Add that to the pile of pieces. And here's the motor. Okay, this is good. Oh, God. Look at the bodgy job I did on this all those years ago when I changed it out. Yeah, that's really poor. Really, really poor. Uh, but we're still not at the point of uh, releasing... Mr. Motor, because we have more screws. I think there's one actually missing from there. I probably didn't put that one back in. Uh, but we've got more screws. So there's one screw here, or should be, and another screw down here. That falls away. Brilliant. See these dodgy seals. I've got something to tell you about these seals. And we should be able to get the motor out. Oh, yep. So there's the, the rear mount, like so, that comes off. There's the bearing, and you can see one of the fans. It's a twin fan motor. There's one fan here and one fan here. And now let's see if we can disconnect it. Oh, what is going on? What did I do back then? Oh, it's awful. Oh, God. Okay. Well, that one can come off. I released you. I've done a terrible job. Ugh. I'm not sure that was even connected. <laughs> right. There's the motor. Okay. And we've got some screws down here. So let's take those screws out. And then I can show you what I was uh, talking about. And this is different. This is definitely different from, from the later machines. On the later cleaners, there's like a, a metal clip here that just sort of comes down and rests at this point. And that's what holds the bottom of the of the machine's front on. But this being an early cleaner, as I say, has got uh, three screws holding it on. I'm glad I didn't pull that anymore because I, I might have snapped the plastic. Interestingly, you can see where this machine's got hot in the past because this is not a straight line any longer. This is, uh, yes, looking like it's had some heat on it. Um, and you can see where the plastic is sort of starting to melt and just dis distort. But finally now we can turn this over, ruddy bit motor out of the way, and we can remove the front of the cleaner. There we go. Um, and as you can see, there's the original air filter, which is completely crumbled to nothing. So that will that, that will definitely come out. And then we've got a bit of duct tape holding that in, but we'll take that off. Actually, let's use the bench vac and just get rid of that. Bit. Okay, 
get rid of that bit, that bit of duct tape. This foam is still perfectly serviceable, so that can that can stay in place. But yeah, that's the front panel. Hoover! Yay! Oh, dearie me. Right, well that's where this video stops, um, because we have achieved what we wanted to achieve. We've got this massive motor. Oh, it's, it's huge! It's very, very heavy. You could kill someone with this. And I've noticed that um, <laughs> it's missing one of its uh, little stays. These are these are terrible, terrible motors. I don't know if you'd be able to see it, but see that little hole there? There's a very small piece of metal. How can I describe it? It's like a cone, a very small cone of steel that's like a little stay, um, and they're hammered in to the motor, and they keep the end frame in place, this end frame here. What is missing from this motor, that one, that is not there, and if I hold it up to the microphone, you can hear it's loose. That's the bearing there. That ain't gonna do it any good. Really not gonna do it any good. So I'm thinking we'll probably put a screw in there. We'll sort of, yeah, put put a, a little screw in there. That should keep it in place. Um, but I'm thinking we might want to give this a service first. Certainly next video, we're gonna run this on the bench see what it sounds like hopefully it's it's okay i don't think i would have put a broken motor into it and this is definitely a 240 volt motor i can tell by the windings so we'll have to see um we'll do some we'll, we'll do some work on this we'll give it a service it doesn't feel great but yeah we will sort it out and then we've got the horror of putting the machine back together now, just thinking about this cleaner, so that was the procedure that I had to go through to take the motor out of it. If I wanted to take the motor out of a uh, Hoover Pure Power, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six screws. I could get that motor out in six screws. Now, how many screws did we have for the convertible? So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. 25 screws to get the motor out compared to a pure power, which would be six. That's quite something. That just shows you how far uh, the ability to manufacture something much more cheaply than they did in the 1960s. Also, bearing in mind, to take the motor out of a pure power, you would have uh, the height control knob, the hood, the two uh, plastic holders where the top body joins the, sh joins the chassis, and the motor cover. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five parts, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, you'd have five parts to get the motor out of a pure power. To get the motor out of the convertible, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, I think it's ten, ten parts, ten, no, 11 because the because of the handle uh, so at least 11 oh I, I found more screws another four screws which i forgot to count for the motor cover it's like 30 screws 30 screws to get the motor out mental absolutely mental but as i say it shows how far manufacturing have has come over the past well, it would have been 50 years by the time Pure Power came out. So, on that note, I'm going to go for a lie down. And in the next video on this machine, we will have a look at the motor, see if it works, give it a service. 
and then I think the following video uh, we will put it back together which is uh, actually putting it back together is even harder than taking it apart so uh, that's something to look forward to but anyway you guys take care don't forget to do the usual commenting subscribing and liking it really helps me out and I appreciate it massively so you take care and I'll see you soon cheers bye